investing so much of their life and their resources into the business um, begin to get optimized occupancy and thereby be able to grow revenues. Uh, that will be ultimately our focus for this conversation. Um, so um, we are all aware of um, the global you know, uh, pandemic and how that is changing everything around the world today. As a matter of fact, um, um, we have been locked in our houses and um, even the phase where we are now, it's still called um, the easing of the lockdown. Uh, what that has basically done is that it has made um, audience movements to be very unpredictable in many ways. And this affects out of home significantly. And so the question that, you know, is on the mind of advertisers is, uh, and buyers alike, is where is everyone? Where, where is everyone, you know? And um, this question is beginning to inform, you know, uh, buying decisions for media as of today, uh, because there is now, you know, significant shifts in how advertisers and, you know, buyers of media are doing what they normally do. Um, and the whole objective is, uh, you know, that where are my audiences and how do I reach them? And, you know, basically uh, measurement of that, you know, is what is determining now, you know, engagement in media. Unfortunately, um, out of home is bearing the brunt when we begin to look into data to see where the budgets are now shifting to. Um, this is a global data from HIV, all right? And it shows between the months of March and June uh, that out of home, whether digital or traditional, is significantly losing out, even though all the others are also losing um, out on, on budget. Uh, whilst digital is, um, uh, of course, gaining momentum. Now, we need to be careful how we use that in a silo uh, to make a judgment that, you know, that is the sole reason why um, out of home spends in Nigeria specifically is now, you know, down. Uh, because that is not exactly the case. When you look into data, uh, you would notice that over the past three years at the minimum, uh, there has been, and, and that is up to 2018 uh, data, that there has been a, you know, very steady, um, pulling away of budget from out of home as, you know, um, a media. And um, that is also reflected, of course, in the occupancy of, all, of out of home. And you can see that on this slide. Uh, so the question is, um, what can we really do to begin to change the trajectory of out of home media uh, in respect specifically to the new normal that we are now faced with? Again, like we have, you know, I've been privileged to attend a number of, uh, you know, um, sessions on this uh, very esteemed uh, forum. And um, the question really gets popped up all of the time around, you know, what is important uh, to, to, to the advertisers and how are they making decisions um, about buying media today. Um, from my perspective and all of that understanding that I can put together, uh, what is critical, you know, for us to note as, you know, practitioners in out of home is uh, value. So um, the new language, you know, more than ever before of, 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 you know, buying the media, what is going to make, you know, advertisers invest behind any media is going to be value. Uh, again, I interpret this to be directly the same as innovation, because we've heard that a lot on this platform. Every time that you hear an advertiser or a media buyer talk about innovation, uh, what they are basically referring to is that, how can we make this thing to produce more juice? How can we make this thing to give us more value? And, and that will be the focus of our conversation going forward. Uh, first is to set the you know, uh, background that you know, we are not in this alone. All other media are equally affected, however, when we get into the reset, full reset mode of post-COVID new normal, um, value will be a major driver of investment. 
and I try to look at what value is and um, you know make meaning of it from three different uh, major perspectives. Okay, and one of them is is data. You know, so how um, do we drive value with audience analytics? Um, the second is creativity. Um, how do we you know get very much more creative than we have ever been in this market, uh, thereby giving advertisers value and raising invest behind out of home. And the third and not the least is, is technology. So how do we um, begin to use the available today uh, to drive value for the advertiser and for us, the media owner? Again, remember always that uh, advertisers a means to an end, and it's not an end in itself. From the advertiser's perspective, who is the spender of the money, who invests behind the media, uh, their sole objective is we want to move more cases. Uh, we want to be able to sell more. You know, whatever it is, we want to convert more. Um, and so the advertising in between is just a means to that end. And um, what will be the driver of, you know, investment therefore should be value. And we believe that if we focus on these three big um, drivers, we certainly can be able to deliver ROI to the advertiser. And in trying to deliver, trying to deliver ROI to the advertiser, we are certain that we can increase our occupancy of our billboards, and then we can equally be able to drive uh, revenues up. So, let us begin to look now a little more into the details of what I mean by data, what I mean by creativity, and what I mean by technology. And I will be asking, you know, a lot of questions. You know, it is common saying that if you are able to ask the right questions, um, you know, then you will most likely uh, be able to tease out the right answers. Uh, and if you tease out the right answers, you are sure on your way, you know, 50% already to solve in real problems, and when you solve problems, okay. you know, Hello? Hello? Go ahead, please, go ahead. Okay, and if you are solving problems, right. you know, there is certainly going to be an exchange of value. So, um, from the out of home perspective, in this case, you solve the problem of um, making sure that advertisers are reaching the right audiences and so on, you get investment in return and our bottom line is significantly improved. So I have these following questions, you know, uh, and I want us to begin to see it from that, this, this perspective. Um, number one is how do we measure volumes of audiences uh, that visit locations? How do we measure volumes of audiences that visit locations? I was just reading through, um, they just released um, on um, research and it is clear that, you know, from, you know, penetration perspective, out of whom is a very solid media uh, that would deliver any day, any time. I think that is 79% or so penetration, you know. And uh, beyond just penetration is the fact that 63% of the people that were, you know, um, uh, surveyed uh, claim to, you know, remember all of the out of whom, you know, exposures or advertisement that they see. And that is very significant. Okay, and so how do we make that, you know, in more granular details to begin to work for us? So, big question, how do we measure volumes of audiences that visit locations? Um, the second big question, you know, that I have, you know, in terms of data as a driver of, you know, value for the advertiser and for the media owners is how do we build knowledge of those audiences. So it is one thing to have what uh, typically we know as traffic counts, uh, which is just volumes. Uh, so a million people were in this location over a period of, say, one month. Uh, but that in itself is not sufficient uh, for the advertiser to make very informed decisions. Because again, the advertiser, you know, based on the profile of their brand, is looking to reach specific type of audiences and not the universe. So one million can be said to be the universe at location A. However, that one million in itself is not the universe of the specific target audience of the advertiser. So how are we able to build knowledge now 
of the specific target audience for a specific brand, which is obviously going to be a subset of that one million uh, universe. How do we understand that in terms of demography, in terms of the different segments, in terms of interest, in terms of the locations that they visit? <clears throat> Again, I've always said to people in recent times that uh, the definition of location, you know, for out of home has changed. Uh, what we used to say out of home location is, is basically uh, where a billboard is located. Uh, for example, I have my billboard located on Todd Mellon Bridge, and you should expect, uh, based on the volumes of people that are there, uh, to be, uh, the numbers are very huge. However, from the media, I mean, from the advertiser's perspective, that is not what exactly they are looking for. They are looking for specific audience segments to be able to reach. And so the definition of location has changed from where a billboard is erected and located to where audiences visit. And where audiences visit means to specific advertisers many different things. Okay, number three question that I have on my mind that I'm asking is, you know, and I want us to ponder over also is, how do we leverage these insights that I've talked about above already uh, to plan effective campaigns that delivers boost eye type of targeting? Because it is until we are beginning to do that, that's when, you know, we begin to see the kind of traction that the advertiser is looking for, or in other words, the kind of value that the advertiser is looking for. And so we can also exchange value for value, you know? Um, so. Number four is, how do we now measure performance? So let's say we understand the volumes of audiences. Uh, we have understood the segments, you know, and we are able to profile and target appropriately. You know, how do we take that from there to, uh, we have just planned to post campaign. How do we measure performance in real time now? So a plan is something, but how do we say, this is what our plan in real time now have run this campaign for a period of four weeks, a period of six weeks, and so on and so forth. What did the campaign deliver? How did each location perform to contribute to that ROI that the advertiser is looking for? Uh, but beyond even you know measuring performance, which is basically uh, people were exposed to billboards, and this is the type of audience that was exposed, and these are the numbers, and so on. How do we measure attribution? Because that becomes very, very key as the next stage, you know, to, um, you know, conversion for the advertiser. Again, like I said at the beginning, uh, the advertiser advertises and invests and puts money behind media, not because they are happy to just do that, but because they want a certain outcome. And if we, from the heart of home perspective, are able to deliver on attribution, uh, we have certainly moved the advertiser away from just exposures uh, to now there is traction, you know. So how do we measure who has been exposed to a content and is now in a retail or, you know, performing a certain action? For example, uh, is, you know, um, browsing the web to see more about the product. Again, I refer to the uh, OAN research that clearly identifies that, that, you know, when people see out of home, uh, other than radio, how, you know, it is out of whom that drives engagement online. And that is so critical. And we need to be able to break that down into further details and see how we show that, we demonstrate that to the advertiser. You know, just not from a survey perspective, but from a real-time perspective that this is truly, you know, working. That of the X percentage of people you reached out of whom, X percentage have been able to take an action closer to retail and conversion. Okay, ultimately, all of what I've said about data uh, should be, you know, um, causing us to think in this manner. Uh, how do we now use audience data uh, to plan out of home uh, to accomplish uh, the purpose of marketing arrow high for the advertiser and for the media owners, you know, uh, occupancy on our billboards and therefore uh, revenue growth. So, um, here on this slide is just a snapshot uh, that demonstrates, you know, uh, the dynamism of audiences, uh, of course, using the COVID era as, um, as um, a case study. So what you see on your slide is three different locations spread out across this country. 
uh, that we have tracked with our data plat uh, management platforms to basically show the disruption, to basically show the disruption of, um, um, you know, of audiences, right? You can close it, please. To basically show the disruption of audiences pre-COVID and what was happening during COVID. And as soon as the lockdown began to be eased, you could already see the audience numbers uh, going up. So this is to say to any advertiser that may be on this platform, you know, this evening, that uh, truly uh, beyond the subjective, uh, uh, you know, interpretation of what we already see, that there's a lot of traffic in a city like Lagos, and I believe uh, many other cities around the country, uh, the numbers, audience numbers to really show to you uh, that you can begin to immediately get value from advertising out of whom today you know, if you really want to speak to audiences. And depending on, you know, the context uh, of your messaging, you can really make a lot of lasting impact with the consumers that you are and audiences that you are trying to reach. Okay, now this is made possible by, you know, um, our data management platform, which is very robust, I like to say, in nature. Uh, and, you know, on this slide, you basically see um, a snapshot of how we aggregate data. Now, it is important to note that, you know, this is a multi-sensor approach, okay, to um, data collection and processing. Um, and um, any one single one, you know, source of this data could actually uh, provide us um, sufficient data for out of whom already. However, we have engaged four different sources, uh, a multi-sensor approach, just to ensure that what we have is of a global standard is very robust and is extremely credible. Again, I should also mention as a second that um, the numbers that we have is not a projection, okay, uh, from using this kind of data management platform. It is not um, like a research that you are projecting to the population. It is absolute numbers, okay? So if, you, if, if data shows that you have 3 million people traversing a specific billboard location, and are exposed to content on that billboard within a period of four weeks or one month, uh, that is exactly the number of people that you get to reach as an advertiser. And it begins to inform from the, you know, efficiency perspective, where you begin to do your CPM, uh, you know, out, out of whom is significantly delivering, you know, um, more than most or even all of the other uh, media types. So one of the um, ways that we collect data is through digital. Uh, what I mean by digital is social media and everything happening uh, in that space, whether it is Foursquare or it is Instagram or it is Twitter, everything happening in public space in you know, social media. We are able to harvest data from there in real time and uh, you know, integrate onto our data management platform. Uh, the second data set is uh, what you call the Google real-time traffic data. So uh, this basically provides you volumes of data, um, you know, across all uh, locations from Nigeria already as we speak. Um, the third source of data is uh, mobile SDK. So um, this is data that is transmitted uh, via apps from your mobile phones or smart devices as you move from one location to other. I mean, what easily comes to mind when you think of this um, uh, data source is the kind of um, uh, data inputs that Uber and uh, Taxify and all of those, um, you know, transportation uh, companies, um, you know, digital transportation uh, companies use to uh, drive results on their user interfaces, okay? Then you have last but not the least, what we call the LAMP. Uh, interpreted location audience measurement platforms. LAMP, location audience measurement platform. Uh, this basically um, is an IoT sensor uh, that is proprietary to us uh, as an organization. Uh, what it basically does is that it picks um, smart devices via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and um, it's able to uh, transmit that uh, information uh, passively to a server. And uh, all of this data across digital traffic, uh, the apps, and the IoT sensors are processed via our proprietary um, APIs, okay? And then we do a lot of machine learning uh, to be able to deliver an output uh, that helps us build uh, real-time knowledge about audiences, 
okay, and be able to impute that into out of home uh, measurements and standards, you know, um, to be able to drive value ultimately for the media owners and then for the advertisers. Okay, so um, suffice to say that um, this um, approach has been, you know, uh, well investigated and has been approved by the U United States uh, Office of Patents and Trademarks. Uh, so this, this is uh, the best that you will find anywhere uh, in the world. All right. So coming to the second, you know, value driver, uh, which is creativity. Uh, so first thing I must first, uh, first thing I must say is that kudos to every media owner that is on the platform. Kudos to also advertisers that also uh, are listening in on this, um, you know, session uh, because we are not new to creativity at all. I mean, I can begin to roll out, you know, a lot of creative works that has happened in this market far back as even um, the 2000s, early 2000s, okay? And so we are not new to it at all. Um, what I'm only asking by putting this up here is that we need to now uh, take this a number of notches up because that is the value uh, that the advertiser is looking for. Uh, they say uh, typically that uh, the reward for good work is uh, more work. So we need, we need to now put in a lot more good work in terms of creativity uh, so that we can continue to deliver, you know, at a better, much better and digital wavelength uh, in our world of today. This is 2020. And so I have questions against to ask us, you know, number one question is how do we leverage now audience location insight to drive you know, messaging. How do we leverage um, audience location insights to drive relevant messaging? Now, from my own perspective and understanding of data, I've interacted with this since at least um, 2016, is that the, uh, the days are far gone when, you know, um, there is a one cap fits all type of campaign being run by advertisers. I think that is a major, major starting point. So if I am brand X and I want to run a campaign, those days are over where I just create one copy and I run that copy on Ocean Outdoor. I run exact same copy on Nimbus Outdoor. I run exact same copy on New Crystal. I run exact same copy on, you know, um, um, Air Power. I run the same on Invent Media. I, I run the same across all media owners. Those days are far gone. That is not, you know, bringing creativity to what we do. The fact is that based on data and understanding that we have uh, profiles of different locations, there could be a location, for example, um, that has a more cluster, okay, um, 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 premium and white collar um, and a type of audiences, more than you would have it at another location B where maybe for the sake of this illustration, you have a lot more uh, college students that traverse and visit those locations. Now, you can't even have a mass uh, market product, uh, but the way that you speak to these two different types of audiences who are predominant in two different locations must be different from the messaging and relevance perspective and context perspective. So we need to begin to bring that you know, into bear when we are planning and executing campaigns today than ever before. Uh, number two question that I have is, how do we now use location ambience more than ever before for context and relevant content? So someone at the airport on their way out of the country, you know, that you are trying to speak to with a mass market solution uh, is not going to be receptive in the same manner with someone that is you know, not in a hurry, not going anywhere, just relaxed at a bar somewhere, you know. The context is going to be different even within the same airport with an advertising opportunity at the lobby area where check-in is happening versus at the lounge where I am fully checked in, I'm just waiting to now do the final body, you know. Those are different contexts. And how do we as, you know, media owners begin to encourage uh, agencies and advertisers to begin to leverage and take advantage of those understandings such that the message begins to be much more emotional and can connect more with the audiences that we are trying to reach. Number three question that I have is how do we collaborate 
with creative teams. Now, it is one thing to understand how your location performs and the kind of audiences that visit your location more, uh, you know, and then to understand even the ambience of your location. But it's a different kettle of fish altogether, how you execute that. That will require significantly collaboration with both advertisers and media owners in terms of this is our understanding of this, our location. We do not think that the way you are going in these other locations will work well with using this location. You know, this is what we would suggest based on our understanding of our location profile. Okay, and if we are able to together collaborate and build campaigns that will connect, uh, what it does ultimately for me as a media owner is that it improves my profile. You know, anytime the advertiser is looking for real value, they want to talk to me because they know that I am not just there to collect their money, I'm there to really exchange value. Okay. Number four question that I have is, how do we now leverage programmatic capabilities that is available today, you know, for deployment of relevant out-of-home content on digital out-of-home? How do we leverage knowledge of day parts? How do we leverage knowledge of audiences that is already available per location? And because of the facility, you know, or, and the digital nature of, you know, um, those screens, how do we leverage that for relevant content? How do we apply data triggers? For example, uh, the weather is so and so and so, and so Coca-Cola is saying when it is anytime there is the temperature is 38 degrees, this is the specific type of content that I would like to be exposed because then it connects more with the consumer that I am trying to reach. Okay. And then finally, how can we leverage billboard located at high footfall areas? for audience engagement, activation, and cross-channel synergy. Now, this is so critical. I, you know, kudos to every organization that is already, you know, making a lot of efforts and succeeding in this respect. But I need us from the industry perspective to begin to see this, you know, as the game changer, really. Uh, my perspective of out of home is that it is not limited at all to, you know, um, static billboards and digital out of home. Out of home is every opportunity to advertise outside of home. And I would encourage Owen and all players, you know, in the industry to begin to look at it from this perspective. As a matter of fact, if you look at, you know, Africa today, you will hear that South Africa that has a population that is just a fraction of Nigeria, you know, is pulling more in terms of total investment and, you know, behind out of home. One of the reasons why that is so is because we have kind of narrowed into thinking that the static billboards, the roadsides, you know, of static and digital screens are the ones, you know, that are out of way. Activations and all of those things, you know, are really the opportunities for us to begin to grow our occupancy because when you begin to have cross-channel opportunities of synergy, uh, what you are making, what we will be making is a compelling case to the advertisers that, you know, uh, you are not just getting outdoor exposure here. You will get more than that. Uh, we can even go as far as now crossing, you know, offline to online because when we have the space where there is food for, okay, we can engage both on how of home and we can engage even on experiential and then we can engage even online via mobile devices of audiences that are within those high food for areas. So these are food for thought, you know, if we would really, really begin to deliver return on investment for advertisers, and if we will really, you know, grow our occupancy rates and also uh, deliver on the bottom line, which is the reason why we, of course, are in business. Okay, so I have decided, you know, taking the liberty to just, you know, show us some pictures, uh, you know, um, from a global perspective, how, you know, ambient, uh, and um, different, um, you know, out of home has been done. You know, and this is this is creativity as its best from a global perspective. And like I said at the beginning, this is this is not limited to what is happening globally. Again, this they are very our, in our minds, very fresh. You know, some of the things that have happened most recently in our market. I mean, the MTN man in the box is one of those. Uh, you can you remember all the different inflatables and big stuff that we have done in those years when out of home was really booming in this market. And we really need to get back to all of that and even take it uh, digital notice up so that we can begin to attract 
the kind of budget, uh, you know, an occupancy that we want. At the same time, we are delivering ROI to the advertisers. Okay, so uh, last but not the least, on the drivers that I call the drivers of value is technology, you know, and the big questions again are, how do we leverage technology today that is available in this market today to build knowledge about highly mobile audiences? How do we do that? Interpret that data and be able to provide, you know, what is otherwise known as location intelligence to advertisers and use that to drive value for the advertisers to attribution and conversion. And then of course, drive up our own um, 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 occupancy and um, revenue, you know, uh, bottom, bottom line, okay? Uh, a big, another big question is how do we leverage technology that is available today to drive a common inventory platform? This is extremely, extremely important if the third point of you know, leveraging technology for an end-to-end -end sales automation will be achieved. If we will achieve occupancy spike in the you know, upward trajectory, this is so, so important. I mean, as we are all aware today, there's not a single inventory uh, pan Nigeria where you would find um, you know, uh, available or even not available out of home assets. Uh, for an advertiser to, 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 to leverage for a specific campaign. Okay, so I have spent about a decade on the agency side uh, buying out of home. And I can tell you that, you know, it takes between, you know, a week, two weeks, or even more for you to be able to aggregate, um, you know, out of home assets and opportunities and create a proposal that you give to an advertiser anytime they said we need to be able to do XYZ campaigns. Uh, that in itself is a waste of, you know, very productive time that could be, that, that we could otherwise turn around into big opportunities. So how do we put together, you know, using technology uh, on a single platform, inventory, you know, that can then uh, help us within a manner, matter of minutes to generate, you know, proposals to advertisers, uh, okay, and to, to clients, uh, that can really help them to deliver the objective of any specific campaign that they are trying to achieve. Um, then how does, you know, a media owner leverage that same technology for sales automation? So I've requested, let's say I'm an agency person, and I've requested that, you know, XYZ company, can you please uh, give me, you know, billboards that you have that are vacant? You know, uh, and it's taking almost forever for, for media owners to be able to deliver on that simple, so to speak, task. Uh, when you have an inventory management platform, that is just at the click of a button. What is available is obvious. What is not available is obvious. You are able to generate proposals at the speed of light, and thereby you are able to improve on, you know, the opportunity to now sell. Uh, because, I mean, as you are all aware, out of maybe 10 proposals that you generate, you probably will sell two. Uh, but if in the first instance, the sale, the speed at which you generate each proposal is three weeks, then you can now imagine the turnaround, you know, um, you know, time that you have in the space of 52 weeks in a year. It ultimately comes down to that, the fact that it then significantly reduces, you know, occupancy opportunity. And then that in itself, you know, begins to, uh, affect how much revenue that you can generate as a media owner. And then ultimately also, it is affecting how quickly advertisers can begin to drive ROI from their own perspective. Um, another big question is, how do we leverage programmatic technology today that is available today for real-time and data-triggered content development? Uh, such that, you know, we are very precise you know, in the deployment of content to, 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 um, to consumers and audiences. And uh, when that happens in the moment of truth, um, this, the importance of that is that, the implication of that is that uh, we are able to drive up significantly conversion when you are able to reach consumers at the moment of truth. 
Um, finally, from the technology perspective is, um, you know, how do we now leverage technology to go from offline to online? At one of the sessions that held, you know, on this extinct platform, I remember that we had a very big conversation of, you know, TV and radio now already uh, being able to sync with, you know, what is happening online uh, via Instagram and Twitter and so on, uh, and Facebook and so on, and people are able to really engage while watching in real time a TV program or engage on radio while listening in to a, you know, real time program that is happening. And, you know, that question has been raised, how does out of home, you know, contribute its own part, you know, by moving people from offline to online. Like, again, I refer to the one research that clearly outlines, you know, that um, out of home is the second only to, you know, um, um, second only to, to radio in terms of driving traffic from offline to online. But we need to be able to move that even notches up to say, you know, how do we use same technology or data management platforms to now be able to reach audiences in real time that are exposed to out of home content on their mobile devices, okay? So um, on this next slide, I just wanted to, you know, from a global perspective, share with us uh, an advert, you know, um, using a specific billboard in London. Uh, this is a campaign of uh, uh, British Airways. I'm sure many of us will be familiar with it, but let me just play to us, uh, just to remind us what happened in this campaign. Enjoy. Um, um, I will get you know, it's likely that if that you My apologies. Um, I don't know what happened. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. I mean, I'm so passionate about out of home. Uh, I mean, you can see in that um, short video how, you know, this, this campaign captured not only attention, but went beyond that to even begin to drive sales for, for British, British Airways. And this is precisely and practically what out of home can do, not uh, only in London, but also in this market. Uh, again, there is always uh, a local application of things that have been done locally. On the slide that you see here, I mean, I'm, I don't know how many of us, you know, uh, will recall, you know, I think it's somewhere in between 2015 or 14 or so, 
where we did this campaign, you know, on the um, Adeniji LED billboard um, um, that was broadcasting in real time live scores during a UEFA Champions League uh, match. So, I mean, technology has been available, but more than ever before, uh, there are now very fine triggers, you know, that can help us to really make an impact. And like you see in the uh, British Airways campaign, it's just a, a combination of all the three value drivers that we've talked about so far. Uh, you could see the, you know, the contribution of data there. You could see creativity at play, and you could see how technology was simply just facilitating, you know, information that and insights and creativity uh, together. Okay, so what is the implication of all of this in real terms and what is what is possible today, you know, from the perspective of the advertisers. How do we, you know, uh, leverage available tools today to ensure that uh, advertisers begin to get out of high from advertising with us, the media owners, in out of home. Uh, so today you will find that, you know, there is available audience um, data and, um, Advertisers and buyers and agencies can do audience data-driven planning uh, that, you know, gives opportunity uh, for them to, within a dashboard, uh, view a registry of assets, uh, be able to have planning data sets, uh, you know, that is not just general, uh, but that also is segmented into different audience types. And we are able to deliver on reach and frequency optimizations that ultimately guarantee that end goal of returning, uh, you know, investment for the advertisers. And, you know, generation of proposal is just at the snap of a finger. Again, there is the opportunity today via tools of buying automation, uh, you know, whereby um, the advertiser or the media agency or buyers can now do automated bookings in real time, uh, be able to see real time availability of you know, um, 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 so of, of, of assets and uh, opportunities out of home because from the age, I mean, media owner's perspective and access to an uh, um, uh, inverting management platform, you are able to do those updates, you know, in real time so that whatever you have is not, you are not winking in the dark anymore. There is a global visibility, you know, for your audience and uh, someone from the buying side, whether it is the advertiser or the media buyer, is able to see that and uh, take advantage of the opportunities uh, from a data perspective. All right, so um, you are able to, um, buyers and advertisers are able to do content, you know, approval, you know, just via technology. Um, you have your negotiations that is possible purely online. And then there is a seamless uh, mobile advertising layer, you know, from a buying perspective. Uh, so today, with this tool, um, what you can certainly do is to, you know, provide what we call guaranteed audiences, where, you know, um, a combination of billboards, you know, over a period of time, uh, maybe the advertiser has said to the media owner and to the agency, I'm trying to reach one million people in the space of seven days, you know, um, in the Keja area of Lagos. And, uh, what are the opportunities? that best fits my brand profile, you know, in terms of out-of-home assets now, uh, that I can use to be able to push this content out. I'm trying to achieve, you know, the sales of, you know, XYZ cases of our product. Uh, what happens from using this tool is to say, uh, from the available opportunities, can we actually, um, based on our understanding of data, reach one million people over this period of seven days? If the answer is, Yes, then that is fine. If the answer is no, we can only reach maybe 852,000, you know, audiences within the space of uh, of seven days. Uh, what is certainly possible from you know the buying automation that we provide is for you to now layer on top of that um, a mobile advertising uh, buy, which is basically crossing from offline to the offline. Uh, and so we are able to identify using the same data management platform because that's a purely digital platform to add back to identify uh, the remaining 148,000 audiences uh, across those specific locations that would not have been exposed to the advertising content of this specific brand. 
okay? And then we can push content to them on their mobile devices in real time, you know, across those days when the campaign is ongoing. That's what we mean by seamless mobile advertising layer. And that, I mean, that uh, buying automation is certainly available today for the advertiser, for them to be able to drive ROI, okay? Uh, programmatic, like I said, is available, um, you know, for the, as a tool for the advertiser and buyers. Where, you know, um, is obviously from the inventory management platforms, uh, a supply side, you know, uh, platform, which is the SSP, uh, that is integrated to our, you know, dynamic ad servers, where you can push content, uh, you know, whether in real, in real time, in a digital manner, and in a very, very efficient uh, data-based manner. Also with figures, just like you've seen uh, what BA has done. Uh, but beyond that, for the advertiser, you know, ROI means also that I'm able to me measure uh, what I'm doing now, a campaign's performing across different, how is my perfect campaign performing across different uh, locations. And so there is the opportunity to be able to do real advanced post-campaign reporting uh, that gives you automation of uh, proof of play images, uh, verification of the ads that have been delivered, you know, real-time campaign adjustments and optimization, uh, big time analytics, you know, of how every uh, campaign is performing per location by as minute as, you know, the different, um, you know, time belts and so on and so forth. And, you know, you are able to also do a lot of comparison of what was booked and uh, what was planned and what did we achieve in this campaign. But on top of all of that is, uh, how are you able also, you know, using these tools to be able to drive attribution? So attribution of footfall of those who were exposed audiences to campaigns and were seen at retail, you know, uh, um, there. Now, from the media owner's uh, perspective, how do we leverage what is the tools that are available today, okay, to optimize occupancy and be able to grow revenues? Uh, it is so, so, so uh, important to me, and I'm very passionate about this. How do we use what is available today to increase occupancy and grow revenues? The first is there is the inventory management platforms uh, that, you, that can really help you to bring speed to everything that you do as a media owner. A single dashboard that gives you opportunity to be able to update your inventory in real time, uh, and so media buyers and advertisers are able to get visibility on that, okay? And a, a dashboard that is able to help you to manage uh, inventory in terms of images uh, and proof of place. You can put all of that there in real time via our, you know, proprietary app apps that we will, you know, make available to all uh, media owners. You know, a, a platform that helps you uh, basically to be able to, you know, update your prices, you know, based on what um, data that you can begin to now see of how, you know, demand and supply forces, you know, are, are pushing, you know, are trying to get to use your platform. And that can really inform how and, you know, how you price your pricing strategy and how you are able to really optimize uh, your assets that you have, because indeed they are limited in nature, you know. Um, uh, how does that input into selling terms uh, and so on and so forth? Again, from that same platform, um, you can integrate to our uh, content management uh, systems or solutions that, that helps you to do programmatic on your digital screens for those who have digital screens. And you can obviously, uh, you are going to be the only exclusive um, uh, content approval if any content can go on your billboard. Um, the second tool that is available to media owners is how do you use audience measurements to now begin to also moderate everything that you are that you are doing uh, in many cases there are two pronged approaches that we use as agencies uh, and media owners uh, to to drive up occupancy and um, you know revenue um, for our assets it is number one you know um, um, speaking to agencies you know, to get the advertisers on board of your, your, your assets. And the other one is, you know, um, direct inter interaction with, um, you know, smaller organizations who are not probably the multinationals 
who we can certainly begin to, with audience measurement now, bring on board, uh, give them reasons to now really invest behind, out of home. And you are able to, you know, from uh, audience measurement perspective, understand time belts and so on and so forth. And it helps you uh, to really now, uh, um, you know, optimize um, occupancy and, and sales for your, for your locations. Okay, a uh, top tool that is basically available to you uh, as a media owner is an end-to-end -end sales automation, you know. So a sales dashboard from where you can generate uh, proposals at the speed of light. Um, you can have real-time inventory availability. Um, people can search, you can quote. So, I mean, you have uh, in instances where, you know, you have a large uh, business development team as a media owner. For example, um, um, personnel one may not exactly know what personnel two is doing um, in terms of um, um, proposals that are, are going out. Uh, but from this end-to-end -end sales automation platform, you can really be able to, you know, as a CEO of the place, uh, kind of understand what is going on, know which of the personnel is, you know, performing based on what another personnel is also doing, and so on and so forth. But more importantly, you are able to just, you know, generate proposals at the speed of light, so to speak, and um, uh, improve the opportunity for occupancy and revenue. And ultimately, you are able to do a lot of analytics, especially from the business driver and CEO's perspective. Um, you are able to see what is happening, how, you know, negotiations are going on for each of your assets, and you are able to bring that knowledge uh, to plan forward, especially in terms of your pricing strategy. Uh, because it's demand and supply forces that should really, you know, drive up, you know, I mean, drive occupancy of your locations and so on. Uh, and then you are able to see uh, which type of um, um, brand segments uh, use your location more, you know, and this can be done by, by location. Um, all of those detailed type of, you know, analysis, um, you can be able to do as using um, the solution or tool that is available okay so in conclusion um so that we can have a broader conversation around all the points and questions that i've raised uh, my view is that you know post covid realities uh, offers out of home media the much needed opportunity for a reset and um, to gain back advertisers confidence which obviously from data as i've demonstrated and shown to us previously um is is winning of sorts uh, so, um, and then, you know, how do we, uh, you know, bring back the fortunes to, to out of home um, through, you know, organizing, you know, um, what we do uh, from the digital inventory perspective and so on and so forth, driving, um, you know, value with data, uh, with creativity, with technology. Um, to be able to deliver ROI to the advertiser and then ultimately drive up occupancy and uh, revenues uh, for our businesses. Um, thank you very much, Babs, uh, and thank you all for, for, for listening. All right. Thank you so much, Tessa. Um, that was a very insightful uh, presentation. Um, I'm sure the participants uh, have gained some, some valuable insight as well. So um, we are now at the question and answer segment. Um, so the question can start rolling in now. I haven't heard um, Tosan's uh, presentation. Uh, we can ask him questions. Um, the rule is that if you want to ask questions, uh, you indicate by a raise of hands. And there is an emoji button that says reaction on your, on your screen. You can click on it to show a raise of hand and you'll be permitted to ask a live question. Uh, otherwise, you can type out in the chat room and ask your questions. Um, so what we're having in the chat room right now are recommendations for your presentation. So far, Tosa, I think you have done a very wonderful presentation and people are commending it. Thank um, you very much for listening. So I, I have uh, um, the question. So let me be the cards. Um, your solution 
or rather you've spoken to two major stakeholders here today, outdoor media owners and the advertisers. Uh, you've tried to encourage the outdoor media owners that uh, they can really drive occupancy and then the advertisers can have a return on investment. Um, so I'll be asking questions broadly right now that speaks to both the advertisers as well as the media owners. And inclusive, um, we won't leave out the uh, media agencies as well. Um, we've had a couple of um, solutions um, over, over the years uh, that can help to achieve what you have uh, highlighted for us here today. What would you say in, in, in specific time um, terms that are unique to um, the proposition that you're sharing with us today? Um, what is different? What, what, what are the uh, new enablers that you think uh, makes this uh, different from, from what we've always known? Okay, um, thanks for, for that question. I think okay. I should... Ni, ni, after, after this, my question, I think Ni wants to ask a question. I will allow him after this. Uh, okay. So you could go ahead. All right. Just, just to put um, um, my answer in, in context, um, I've um, had the opportunity also to be on the side of um, the buyers. Uh, I've only worked at an agency and um, been able to, you know, do a lot of, uh, um, you know, significant things, uh, partnering, of course, with outdoor media owners. Um, my, what led us into this effort um, in the first instance is the fact that, you know, at marketing rooms uh, where we went to, you know, defend proposals, uh, asking advertisers to spend billions of naira um, on how to home advertising, uh, what you typically got uh, is some level of reluctance uh, that is driven from the point of, you know, uh, these are so expensive. Um, I know you have explained to me that, you know, it costs a lot of money uh, to acquire and, you know, erect some of these assets, especially in a place like Lagos. Uh, however, that is not sufficient from, from the Haroi perspective for me to defend, you know, this budget uh, before my directors and, and the board and, and so on and the business, okay? And that basically led us, you know, um, into saying um, we need to do something, you know, um, then as an agency um, to ensure that uh, we are really uh, and truly delivering uh, ROI for the advertisers. And um, I should mention, uh, you know, in this... Um, very esteemed forum. Uh, I've been part of two such um, very proprietary and unique efforts to do that. Um, and um, one of them is in the fact that um, uh, working with something that TMKG started then uh, called BSV, okay, uh, billboard site valuation that kind of um, from a zero to 100 uh, rated billboards. Uh, we were able to, you know, kind of give some sense of value to the advertiser uh, per location by the type of billboard. Uh, however, that was a very um, insufficient effort. And um, I recall that in sometime 2016, uh, we then engaged in a much bigger effort uh, to commission a traffic count and a travel survey, okay? Um, using Lagos as a case study. And um, um, we covered, I believe, 80% of, of Lagos then, um, tracking different corridors, okay, and being able to deliver uh, audience measurements in terms of the reach, frequency, and GRPs. Uh, all of that data was integrated into a um, software uh, that we called then uh, Media Audience Look Software. Uh, Manus. It was a proprietary software, okay? However, the, 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 uh, um, the, the, the short fall or shortcoming of that is that um, that 
to organize a traffic count and uh, a travel survey is uh, very static in nature. How many times are you going to be able to do that um, in a year? Uh, how long um, do you, um, you know, the audiences are dynamic. Uh, and so it will require a digital, you know, technology to really be able to make sense of um, audiences in real time that is most useful for the advertisers if uh, ROI is the objective. And so that um, solution, even as good as it was, and to the best of my knowledge, nothing existing, um, you know, um, in the market um, to that level, you know, from my own perspective, um, was, you know, um, not sufficient. Uh, and so um, we have now invested, you know, as an advertising technology business, in um, you know, um, gathering information that helps us provide location intelligence. And like I showed to you in the presentation, um, we are not relying on one source of data. Um, this is a multi-sensor type of um, 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 data aggregation and integration um, that is second to none anywhere in the world. As a matter of fact, as I speak to you, um, the general data that is available in the United States today, provided by Geopath, um, it is not uh, as robust as this one because uh, that one does not uh, factor in some of the other sources that we have now aggregated into the data uh, that we are providing in Nigerian market. So in other words, what I'm saying to us uh, media owners is that uh, the best of the best of you know, audience measurement in terms of viewability available in the world is now in this country and that is second to none you know anywhere else i hope that answers your question all right um fair enough um my question is actually on behalf of the participants so <laughs> i'm sure I, i'm sure that they are pleased with that okay uh, let me see if Nee is still still there raising up his hands uh Nii, if you want to ask the last live question you must be ready to um um put on your video and and then you can go ahead i've enabled for you to unmute and then you can ask the live questions others are posting questions in the chat room so you and i can start reading out yeah. but after these um, question all right Nee, you have the floor okay uh, uh good afternoon everybody uh, uh mr president of one and all other protocols observed uh, uh tosan thank you so much for a uh, very very insightful uh, presentation and uh, I think Babs, you and I have had this uh, conversation, you know, privately before, where we both agreed that a lot of people were, you know, obviously from the media buyers uh, and advertisers' point of view, they were obviously pushing for innovation, and we had obviously said that innovation itself had to be broken down and defined to give the options available uh, for innovation. And I believe that Tosan's uh, presentation has uh, basically. Um, answered uh, the question of what innovation entails and the expectations of the um, of the buyers and advertisers and what we the um, outdoor practitioners alike should be doing. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, secondly, uh, my question to you would then be: um, I haven't laid out all these um, opportunities and the technology that is available to support it. Uh, my question then would be: In what, how then do we proceed um, to implementation? So, as a as a as an outdoor practitioner now, what are the steps that I can take to begin to uh, take advantage of this um, innovation that I have laid out? Um, you know, so that obviously everybody needs to go back to the drawing board. We need to then realize: Okay, these are the opportunities that are available, which was initially oblivious to some of us. So in your own view, Tosan, how do you think, uh, step by step, how can we proceed to tapping into um, the innovation that you have uh, suggested here? Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Right. Thanks very much, um, me for, for that question. Um, so um, Forgive me, I'm trying to just quickly uh, pick something from, you know, a very hard description, you know, by uh, uh, um, 
um, what's the gentleman's name? Babs, can you help me from uh, Avas group at the last panel session? Uh, oh, Kunal, Kunal. Kunal, Kunal. fantastic. So um, at, at one of those sessions on this, this platform, uh, Kunal had kind of um, uh, clearly defined the steps, you know, that we have also taken, you know, um, is submission completely aligned with what uh, we have done. And I think the first is um, a basic audit of, you know, out of home assets, uh, which he said that can also mean um, in the terms that I have used it as, you know, an inventory management platform uh, where you have a registry of billboards. So uh, when I also said in my conclusion that we need to organize uh, for groups, um, that is exactly what I mean. Um, where, you know, um, there is an organization, you know, um, and from a single dashboard, you know, without stress, media buyers and advertisers can be able to view, you know, assets and opportunities that are available and they'll be able to make decisions very, very uh, quickly. Okay, that is the first step. The, the next step, you know, which, um, um, and, you know, the action that needs to be taken by media owners, you know, that may be on this platform that we do not already have um, in their inventory on our dashboard um, is to basically, you know, uh, coordinate with us after now. Uh, all that it requires is just um, is simple, you know, uh, there is a format, an Excel format that needs to be filled out that would include uh, the lat long coordinates of every location. That is basically uh, the most important information that helps us to be able to acquire uh, data for every location. So as I speak to you, there is already data um, for every out of home location uh, laid out like a grid of um, uh, NEPA or power uh, that is laid out in a new uh, estate development. Uh, when everybody builds their house uh, by providing lat long, you know, um, uh, coordinates, then data is acquired from the main uh, high tension power grid uh, that already has power existing in it, and you can have power to be used in your house. Uh, so that's the process. Very simple. After now, uh, that one in its, in its in itself does not cost media owners any money or investment at all to get your inventory to be on the platform in the first instance. Now, being able to operate that platform uh, in a way that it gives you access to data and all of the different tools that are available, that is where there, needs, there will be a financial consideration. However, that is, uh, you know, extremely, I mean, something that we consider very, very affordable because again, uh, remember that we know that the industry is bleeding and then if people are bleeding, uh, the first thing to do is to stop that bleeding. Uh, and that is what exactly we are here to do. Uh, in other markets, I know that to even get on inventory, uh, people are requested or media owners are requested uh, to buy a billboard by billboard basis, uh, make an investment to get onto the technology platform to get visibility from you know, buyers and advertisers. Uh, but that's not the approach we have used in this market. Having a full understanding uh, that we need to provide our own uh, contribution okay, to, to be able to drive occupancy and uh, return on investment. So the next level will be to now um, acquire data for each of those locations, which uh, based on what uh, Kunal also said, which is done already as we speak. Um, on top of that is, um, I can't remember all of the different steps, but we have graduated all of that to even a buying platform now, an exchange where buyers and sellers, just like what you have on Kunda or on, um, uh, on um, um, what do you call it now, uh, on Amazon, I can't do today, where you can just, as a buyer, go to, you know, subscribe to use the platform, and you can, you know, without the media owners spending any OPEX or logistics, uh, can get somebody contacting them that uh, your location is delivering the kind of audience that I'm looking for. Uh, I want to make a deal. And, you know, um, I see that your gross rate on the platform is this. Um, can we negotiate? Can I buy it at so uh, much and so much and so on? 
So those are the practical steps that need to be taken. Uh, first is get onto the platform with your inventory. Uh, we cover a good number of the commercial cities already in Nigeria, up to nine of them, Lagos, Kodakot, Abuja, uh, Onicha, Oweri, Enugu, Kaduna, Kano, and um, um, Ibadan. Uh, Benin is joining immediately after the lockdown, and then we take it up from there. So those are the practical steps that you know anyone can you know take advantage of uh, to begin to already optimize occupancy and um, uh, grow revenues. All right, thank you so much, Tosan. Um, got two questions here in the chat room. I don't know if you can also see them. Uh, yeah, one is from one. Henry, right? Okay, I take that one as um, something that um, you guys will have to take the conversation further. Uh, offline, says, yes. Every offline. we can take this conversation offline. But the process is very simple. I can assure you it is all planned to um, improve occupancy and to return um, on investment for media owners also. And likewise, to um, give the advertisers confidence, you know, in this uh, very, very outstanding platform called Out of Home Advertising. Okay, then the next one, I think it's also similar. It says, so can media owners subscribe to your services by having a device installed at their location with a dashboard showing real-time analysis? If yes, please kindly provide your details, okay? I think it's similar. Okay, so this, you know. The second part of it, we can have that conversation uh, offline. Uh, but the first part of your question, there is no, um, it is not compulsory that we have to install a device at every location. Um, as we speak, actually, we have you know, been able to calibrate data for all of these locations that we cover already uh, via whether our IoT uh, sensor or other sources of data. Again, most of the data inputs are collected. Um, just, 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 uh, you need to help all participants here to come up to speed with you. You just said IoT now. Um, Okay. So this is Nugget. You need to uh, introduce. <laughs> better you don't okay. use acronyms. Uh, my, exactly. my apologies. So what I mean by IoT, so earlier in the presentation, I uh, showed a slide uh, that um, kind of just demos, um, you know, gave a snapshot of our data uh, management platform or the data ecosystem that we ride on. Uh, one thing I also said was that it is a multi-sensor approach. Uh, to determine viewability for out of home uh, measurement that we have taken. And that is the best approach that is available yet in the world today. And it brings together a number of sources uh, of data. One of those sources is uh, what you can refer to digital. And when I say digital, I mean everything happening in social media, on Instagram, on Twitter, if you use Foursquare and on search, all of that um, uh, data is integrated onto the platform. And so we are able to glean, uh, you know, information about audiences, uh, um, uh, anonymous information, but unique information, all right? Um, the second source of data that also we leverage on our data management platform and integrate is um, from Google, which is um, the Google real-time traffic data. Uh, that kind of provides uh, volumes of data, whether people are in vehicles or people are pedestrians across all the different locations and geographies pan Nigeria. Uh, the third source of data that we also integrate and process is um, what I call the mobile SDK. Uh, what that means is simply uh, apps that are on our smart devices are uh, transmitting data to the cloud so we all have the WhatsApp, we have all different kind of apps. All of those apps, you know, when you download them, you, you click on certain permissions, and it is those uh, permissions that gives access, you know, um, to information that is, you know, basically transmitted. And we are able to, you know, integrate all of that data onto our platforms to make sense of audiences and their, their movements and their profiles, their preferences, their interests and so on and so forth. Then there is the final uh, data uh, input, which is the only hardware that is deployed, you know, on our data management platform, uh, which is called a LAMP. 
LAMP as an acronym for Location Audience Measurement Platforms. Uh, the LAMP is actually a proprietary IoT, and what I mean by IoT is Internet of Things device. Uh, an Internet of Things device helps you to be able to do machine learning, and it transcends beyond that even to augmented, I mean, sorry, uh, artificial intelligence. All right, so <clears throat> we have all of that, um, you know, data input uh, is aggregated, is weighted, you know, um, considering certainly uh, population numbers and all of that, and you have absolute numbers uh, for every location as against projected numbers, which is the best any survey can give to you. Uh, in fact, we are all aware that the industry tool that is used for electronic media today has a database of about 22,000. Now, I can announce to us, you know, um, with all the sense of modesty, uh, that we are all, you know, uh, privileged as, you know, practitioners together to now be leading the charge in terms of audience measurement in this market, uh, out of whom now offers you the very best possible uh, audience measurement and data management platforms that is available anywhere in the world, better than any technology or research that is done presently in this market and in most, most, most markets. Uh, so um, to come back to answer that question, if you, you know, subscribe and get access to the uh, dashboard to be able to access all those details of analysis, yes, you will have for seamless um, integration into your, your platform, you know, to answer uh, Fumulade's uh, question. Okay, all right. There's another question here from Wally. It says, um, I told some, please, what is the impact of this on the privacy of the audience? Oh, absolutely, F fantastic questions. So if you have noticed, um, even just now, uh, that I had mentioned that this is anonymous data uh, that is clustered together. So um, the data uh, collection uh, process or approach uh, certainly does not know uh, individuals as Tosa or Babs or Wale. Uh, however, he understands and builds knowledge about uh, us in clusters, but uniquely. So uh, there is a way that I behave that is similar to the way uh, a good number of other people behave based on our digital footprint. Uh, so I'll give you a typical example. Uh, and this is purely location intelligence. If I am the type that on a weekly basis, maybe twice in a week, on my way out of GRA where my office is, I would always, always take a stop at maybe uh, Old English to buy some snacks and bread uh, for my kids and for the family. Uh, you know, that is a trend that digitally is captured, okay? And so, um, if I'm the type that at every break time, you find me at yellow, yellow chili, okay? And that is something that is digitally picked up. And um, it shows obviously that, for example, from a defining or a profiling of audience perspective, I am a food lover. And because all of us eat to survive, but not all of us have, uh, frankly, the time to go to a yellow chili or a sweet sensation or an eatery on a daily basis, you know, or on a regular basis, or, you know, on a weekly basis, um, you know, to eat. Uh, most of us probably would order that food that helps us to just get going. Uh, we don't necessarily visit those locations. And so um, if there's someone else also that, you know, visits the gym, for example, on a very frequent basis, maybe three or four times in a week over a defined period that, you know, you can say that this is a behavior, then digitally we are able to pick that in aggregates and make sense of that data to say, this person is a fitness enthusiast, okay? If there's one that is a technology enthusiast, you easily be able to also um, know that. Now, all of that data is anonymous. Uh, but it is unique in the fact that uh, you are able to really distill uh, profiles of audiences based on location, based on preferences, and based on interest. So again, let me say finally to, on that note that uh, this approach 
has been protected from the Office of Patents and Trademarks in the United States, uh, where you would argue that you know uh, privacy is the biggest of concerns anywhere in the world, and uh, that agenda is pushed, and they would never have approved. I mean, approved you know or trademarked or patented uh, any solution that is uh, you know infringing on privacy rights of uh, individuals. All right. The next question is from Judith. It says, how do you intend to manage downtime? If it does happen, how are you planning to mitigate against any challenges that might occur, especially the fact that this is the first time? Okay, thank, thank you very much, Judith, for the question. <laughs> so um, I love because um, a great question, but because I'm more excited even about answering um, the question question and providing some further information. So first to note is the fact that uh, this solution is a cloud-based solution. Uh, when you talk about real-time audience um, uh, measurements and uh, viewability numbers, uh, it has to be uh, in the cloud. It is not a software that is, um, you know, um, um, you know, um, installed into anybody's system. So with a simple credential of a username and a password, everyone can easily uh, just get access to the platform. So in the first instance, it's a cloud-based solution. Um, can there be um, a downtime? The answer is yes. Uh, but will it be fixed, um, you know, very quickly? The answer also um, from our perspective is yes. Now, when you mention that this is the first time, uh, I, I like that point because it provides me the opportunity to provide uh, further clarity about this solution. Now, uh, ICL does not do this all by ourselves. We actually have a technology partner, okay, a strategic partner uh, called Moving Walls. You know, after this session, you may want to Google uh, who Moving Walls is. So, Moving Walls is um, a leading location intelligence uh, provider globally. Uh, they are based out of Asia, but certainly with footprint in San Francisco, the very hub of technology in the United States. Uh, and this solution is also run in the United States. So these are being applied across three continents already uh, before Nigeria is now, and Africa is now joining. So this is something that has been well tested and as you know, is uh, proven to have met all standards available. Uh, what I can assure you also is that we have a large pool of technology back-end guys working across from multiple countries, not just um, you know, one country. People are working out of Singapore, Malaysia, India, simultaneously to ensure that this solution maintains uh, that standard that has been proven in other markets. I, I must also mention, finally, uh, that this solution has been already adopted in a number of markets, including the Singapore market, as the de facto, you know, for uh, out of home measurement and uh, planning. I hope right. that answers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just, uh, um, our time is first, uh, first spent. We've done over an hour, 30 minutes since we started. Um, in the absence of any additional questions, uh, we might just be wrapping up. Um, the only thing I would ask of you is um, to give a parting word. Um, and um, you might want to do that within one minute, if it's doable. And then, okay. I think and, it's then doable. Can, and then we can wrap it up. All right. Okay. So thank you all very much. Thanks, uh, first, uh, Outdoor Republic and Babs and uh, the sponsors also, Nimbus, for uh, bringing me on to be able to uh, have this discussion with us. I also want to thank the OAN president who is uh, present here and every other media owner that is, and everyone that is attending this session. I see uh, media uh, buyers also here. Thank you for the opportunity to share uh, with us what we are doing. Um, I am absolutely confident based on um, the knowledge that I have that uh, out of whom is radically going to change the way media as a whole is being done in this market. I think it's a great opportunity that even uh, COVID has presented 
And um, I would finally say, let us organize um, for growth uh, so that we can take the market by storm, uh, be able to bring back those revenues, increase occupancy, deliver ROI to advertisers. Thank you very much for uh, listening and God bless. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much Tosan, for coming. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we have finally come to the end of um, today's uh, Outdoor Republic Live. Um, another shout out goes to all those that um, have been supporting us. Um, out, Ocean Outdoor, uh, Nimbus Media, we thank you for the support so far. And then our guest, Tosan, we thank you for all the nuggets that you've dropped here today. Um, our usual practice is when we are parting like this, uh, you show the guests some love for having spent um, over an hour with us here. Yeah. So you are all I'm free to unmute. I'm one of you in this case. Uh, I've, 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 I've enabled all to unmute yourselves. You can unmute yourselves to say thank you to Tosa. And then you can you. also you. enable your video and uh, let's make some facial contacts so that it doesn't look like um, I've arranged some uh, hey. some ghosts <laughs> to attend with us on here today. So go ahead and um, show us some love. Thank you so much. Thank you, much. Thank you, Thank you very much for the time that we spent here. Today. Well done, Tosa. You're, you're dragging it. Nice one, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Tosa. Thank you. Thank you, Tosa. Bob, I can't believe I see you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well, well done, Bob. You're driving this too. I appreciate everyone Thank for being here. Thank you all very much. Well done, Tosa. Hello, Ivy. Hello, Vincent. Tibun. Bodu. Judith. Shout out to everyone. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Shout out. Hey, Tokwe. Good to see you. I saw you got earlier. Nanosa, see you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Mr. Michael, thank you. Mr. Felix, thank you all very much. I appreciate it. All right, bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you all. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye. Yeah.